So we'll uh, continue with the discussion of the poem, The Voice of the Rain. As we had uh, discussed yesterday, what does the rain say about itself? The poet asks the rain a question, who are you? And the rain gives a reply. And what does the rain say about itself? What does it call itself? It calls itself the poem of the earth, right? And uh, yes, uh, just like poetry has rhyme and rhythm, the rain also, it has that music. It has its sound as it falls on the earth. And the rain here in this word, it shows how important it is that if rain is not here, the earth is not there. We are not there. There is no life that can be sustained or there can be no life that will carry on in the absence of rain. And that is what makes our planet so beautiful. So the rain, yes, it calls itself the poem of the earth because it makes the rain, uh, you know, like the earth, it makes it, the rain makes the earth beautiful, makes it colorful, gives new life, and it continues the life which is already there. Clear? The device of personification has been used because the rain is there talking to the poet, giving it a reply, and uh, talking about itself, telling about its life. What are the things that the rain does? Yes, what are the things that the rain does? Yes, look at these lines and tell me. What does it do? It washes away the dust. Yes, it cleans everything. It purifies everything. So after the rain, what happens? Everything looks so fresh and clean, so beautiful. And so the rain, as it falls down, as it descends from the heavens, what does it do? It washes away all the dirt, washes away all the dust, whatever has there, you know, around the globe, what is there in the atmosphere, all the dust, it washes it down, it brings it down. And so it purifies the earth. And not only the earth, the atmosphere also, okay? And yes, otherwise, the things which would be unborn, the seeds which would not grow, the earth, you know, like, uh, yes, has uh, these seeds, the plants which are there on the, the rain. When it will fall down, it will give new life to them. The seeds will germinate because of the rain. The plants that are already there, they will bloom. The crops will ripen. So life is continued because of the rain. And the rain, whatever life it has created, by falling again and again, it sustains that life, it continues that life, right? And yes, what was the origin of the rain? What does the rain tell about its origin? Where does it rise from? Where does it originate from? From the land and from the bottomless sea. See, the bottomless sea shows the eternal nature of the rain. Eternal, forever, continuous, unending. And yes, it rises from the land and from the sea. We just can't see it, we can't touch it, feel it. But yes, how do we feel it? When it goes into the heavens, when it goes into the skies, it changes its form. What does it become in the sky? It becomes a cloud. Although it has changed, you know, its appearance is now different, but its basic quality is the same. Then the rain, it falls down on the earth. Yes, and when it falls down on the earth, what does it do? It carries on, it continues the life it had created, right? Is this clear or not? Up till here we had discussed yesterday. So upward to heaven went vaguely formed. Vague is not clear. Like the clouds here, they don't have a very defined shape. They're not very clear but altogether changed and yet the same. I might have changed in my appearance, but inherently my basic quality is still the same. It's a form there, you know, like, yes, you talk about it. So water there and vapor, all that here. So once again, it will become water. So it is still the same, although it might have changed in its appearance, it might have changed in its form, right? I descend, descend, Come down. Who is I over here? Yes, who is I? I is the rain. 
the I am the poem of earth. Eternal I rise. I descend. And uh, where does it descend from? Descends from the clouds, from the heavens. Right? See, it is coming down from the heavens. We also have the divine nature of the rain. Yes, it's coming down from the heavens, falling down on the ordinary human beings who are there on the earth and all the things which have been created by the rain in the first place. Right? I descend to lave the drops. So because of lack of rain, what is going to happen? Because of the scarcity of water, because of the scarcity of rain, the crops are going to suffer, the plants are going to suffer, life is going to suffer. So the rain, it descends. It washes away the drought. Naturally, the rain has come. There's no drought. Atomies, the small particles, right, which are there in the atmosphere, it comes and washes them down, brings them down, and the dust layers of the globe. So many things it comes as it falls, washes away the drought, washes away the dust, washes away the tiny particles. And as it brings everything down and when it falls on the earth, what will happen to the seeds? All that and all that in them without me were seeds only, latent, unborn. Otherwise, what would happen? Just like, yes, uh, the rain falling and everybody feels so happy. That uh, yes, uh, we feel happy because the temperature is going to drop. It's going to be cooler. It's going to be nice. But uh, yes, here yeah, the farmers they feel happy. The seeds are going to germinate. They need that rain for them. So here, otherwise, if the rain did not fall, what will happen? The seeds will remain like that. Where within latent, unborn. Latent means hidden, right? So their their seeds would remain hidden. That uh, new plant would not germinate unborn it would not germinate and forever by day and night i give back life to my own origin do we sense a tinge of pride in the rain's voice the rain is so proud of being the poem of earth the rain is they're so proud of its you know strength of not only creating but perpetuating that life it has created by continuing the life it has created. Forever by day and night, I give back life to my own origin. I created this and I fall back on the earth and I carry on or I help in that life to continue and make pure and beautify it. So what is apart from continuing that life? Right? So just imagine if there were no rain, what would life be like? Terrible. Yes? So the rain as it falls, it continues the life it has created. It sustains that life. It continues that life. And what does it do? Make pure and beautify it. I purify the earth. I beautify the earth. How does it purify? It said that it washes away all the dust, right? And of course, we see that we people are there so bad and the vehicles there on the road, uh, the industries there creating so much of pollution that there are times when it becomes difficult to breathe only. That there is that haze in the atmosphere, right? And uh, what happens? The rain comes, it purifies it for us and we feel so happy to thank God there was rain and now we're able to breathe properly. So the dust has settled down. So it makes it pure. It makes the earth pure. It makes the atmosphere pure. Beautify it. How does the rain beautify? Yes, when the seeds will come out. Or when the seeds, sorry, when the seeds germinate and the new plants come out, they color the new life, what is it going to do? It is going to beautify the earth, right? So rain is there very, very important for sustaining. You like, just like you plant, uh, you know, a flower or you plant a tree, you have to take care of it. It's not going to grow, you know, on its own. And if you do not give it attention, what is going to happen? It will dry up and wither away. Similarly, 
what does the rain say about itself? This, this is my origin. I have created it and I come back again and again. It's an endless cycle. That is why the rain calls itself eternal, forever. Okay? Make pure and beautify it. A song issuing from its birthplace after fulfillment, wandering, wrecked or unwrecked duly with love return. Now, please note these two lines, they are in brackets. These lines have not been spoken by the rain. These are the words of the poem. This also from here. I am the poem of the earth till beautify it. These are the words of the rain. Which of the two voices we hear in this poem? One is the voice of the poet. The second is the voice of the rain. Who art thou? Is the poet asking the rain. And of course, the rain talks about itself, tells about its life, tells about its importance. Now the poet is there comparing rain with music. How does rain create music? What is this comparison with? Yes. How does rain create that music? So there's a lot of music we have when the rain falls on the rooftops, the sound that it makes, sometimes it's a soft sound. Sometimes it's a loud noise that the rain makes. Yes, so yeah, alike that way, the rain also creates that sound when it falls on the roof, when it falls on the surface, when it falls everywhere, right? Now in these last two lines, what has the poet done? He has compared the rain with music. And music, what about the songs? What happens to them? So we see that many songs that were created so many years ago, what happens? How are they kept alive? What do the composers do? They add more rhyme and rhythm. They will make it according to the need of the art. Like this is what the youngsters of today want to listen. So they make it a little more peppy. So yeah, that you enjoy it. So just like that, what about music? It undergoes a lot of changes, right? So what the composer had made and he did not realize that this is how the song is going to reach to my listeners. And music has no barrier. Music does not understand any language, right? We just uh, love it here, right? Just because of the rhyme and the rhythm and the beats of it. Yes, right? Am I correct? And so music travels far and wide irrespective of where it originated from. So what is the similarity with rain? Just like the rain, where does it originate from? The land, the sea, where does it go towards the clouds, towards the heaven? It changes its forms, right? And in various forms, it comes back on the earth, whether it is rain or hail or snow, right? So just like that, music also, the creator composes that song, changes are made, additions are made, and in some form or the other, it returns. Now just look here. For song issuing from its birthplace after fulfillment wandering, wrecked or unwrecked, duly with love returns. So just like the song, the rain here, has been compared with music. So just like the song, issuing from its birthplace. What is the birthplace of the song? The composer is there. After fulfillment, right? After being composed, after its creation, wanders, where? Everywhere. Many places it goes. You can't control, you can't stop music from, uh, you know, yeah, being uh, spread far and wide. Just now you can't stop the rain. Then wrecked or unwrecked, changed or unchanged, duly with love returns. So it comes back in some form or the other, it will come back, right? To the place of its origin, to the place of its creation, right? And of course, it is there wherever that music goes, some changes are done. 
right? So it goes to one nation, yeah, they like it, they make their own little additions to it. It goes to some other place, it is changed. But in some form or the other, it comes back. And wherever it goes, it is welcome. So just like that, the rain, how does it rise in the form of vapors? What happens to it in the heavens, in the clouds? What happens? Yes, it changes its form. Okay, right? Becomes a cloud. And then it descends from the heavens. It falls down on the land once again. And as it does, yes, it once again gives a life to the things that it created. So the music also then, right? Traveling far and wide here and there and coming back in not necessarily the same form. So just like that, the comparison has been made with the rain. Is this clear? Yes. So here, of course, see what does the rain call itself? The rain calls itself the poem of the earth. Right? What does the poet uh, compare the rain with? Music. Just like music is there. You can't control it. You can't stop it. And uh, you can't, uh, you know, like, uh, yes, uh, no one uh, can uh, control it. And music understands no barriers, no borders, travels far and wide. The rain also crosses boundaries across regions and anywhere, everywhere it is welcome, right? So in its various forms, whatever way it descends. The music also. Right, so it wanders from place to place, so many changes, so many additions, so many things here. That, yes, but of course, its basic form is the same. So, this is the comparison. So, now, yes, so we have understood the importance of the rain. So, how is it important? It purifies, it beautifies, it is endless, it is cyclic, it is continuous, right. So what are we doing here is that, yes, so as we read this poem, we came across words that are what? Opposites. Yes. So now look at this line. Upward to heaven, winds vaguely formed, altogether changed and yet the same. Changed, same. Yes, I descend, upward, descend, right? Then what else is there? Day, night, okay? Then we have other opposite words, wrecked, unwrecked, change, unchanged, right? Yes, so it is there, right? Uh, can we identify a rhyme scheme over here? Is there a rhyme scheme? This free verse, Walt Whitman, yes, so he's written this poem. But yes, he's given a beautiful expression here about the beauty of the rain and the voice of the rain. So who is the voice of the rain in this poem? Who do you think is the voice of the rain in this poem? Yes, who is the voice of the rain? Who's speaking for the rain? Because the poet has said, gave me an answer as he had translated. Who is the voice of the rain? The poet is the voice of the rain. How do we hear the voice of the rain? So yes, yeah, so we heard it, right? Of course, so whether it is there, you know, like the pitter patter, the soft drizzle, the showers, or the heavy downpours, we do hear the voice of the rain. But who has explained the voice of the rain to us? It is the poet. Because he says that we are ordinary mortals. You cannot understand what the rain is trying to say. Let me tell you. And yes, thereby he has made us realize the importance of the rain. That the rain is very important for us. It purifies the earth. It purifies the earth. And in various forms it changes. But it comes back again to the earth. Such is its attachment. Right? And yes, here it is telling us also about the cyclic nature of the rain, the eternal quality of the rain. Will it ever end as long as there are water bodies? No, right? So that is why, you know, like, yes, so we 
want uh, rain here, but we too also have to need uh, to make a few efforts here, like we were telling about deforestation and things like that. Okay, right? So this is here about this poem. Poe I am the poem of Earth is a metaphor. The poet has used this, or the rain has compared itself with the poem. Okay, so a comparison, implied comparison, is a metaphor. The rain has compared itself. The rain has assumed it to be the poem of Earth. It's the poetry thing, right? Okay, so it's a metaphor over here. There's personification over here, right? So these two, who art thou? He's asking a question. Rhetorics. And of course, who's giving the answer? The poet is actually himself giving the answer. He's speaking for the rain. Okay. Yes. So any doubts, any questions, any problems you have? Right? Yes, students. Yes. 